Helix 14, Origins, by Owen Bowerson. The heavy rain pelted the window panes brutally, sounding as though it was on the verge of shattering. Marcus saw no problem with it. In fact, he enjoyed the rain. He especially loved watching it out his parents' New York apartment window. He felt lucky to be able to spend his time at the apartment on his own while his parents were gone. It wasn't for long, but it still felt good to him. During every summer vacation, his parents left for Florida, taking up residence in their waterfront home. Marcus never had the desire to leave. He loved New York, and he always had. Besides, he had work to do as well. He could make his features out in the window, his brown hair complemented by his hardly noticeable widow's peak. He tapped the glass with his finger, tracing a drop of rain as it slid down the pane. So slow, Marcus muttered, smiling, but so relaxing. Suddenly, he stood to his feet, preparing himself for his patrol. Although, I guess nothing else in the city is relaxing. Marcus leaped from the comfortable chair he had been sitting in, quickly running to his room to grab his outfit. He left the suit sprawled on his bed. That way, it was far easier to put on. The blue suit was complemented by a white outline on the seams, wrapping all the way up and down the cuffs as well. A small orb sat, appropriately locked in place in the chest of the suit. It wasn't large enough to be noticed from a mile away, but certainly noticeable up close. He slid into it with ease and comfort, patting it down gingerly to ensure it fit tight against his body. No matter how many times he put it on, he liked it more and more each time. To finalize his look, he forced a blue tinge to his irises, shifting the color from their original brown. He found it changed his appearance in a way that people did not seem to recognize him, a necessity, as far as he was concerned. He ran back into the living room, passing by all the promptly displayed birthday cards. He picked up one of the cards, unfolding it to admire the pleasant birthday wishes. He shook his head softly, smiling as his thoughts run their course. Not even three months had passed since my 16th birthday, and these still warm my heart. Planting the card back down, he slid open the window and, without hesitation, jumped straight through the gap. His body barely cleared it, but he made it nonetheless. He didn't even reach the ground before the force of his flight kicked up dust below him. Luckily, no one was around to see him jump through the window, something he knew he needed to be more careful about. Regardless, he soared through the air, not a care in the world. However, he heard the faint cry for help just then. He arrived just in time. His extreme flight carried him there in no time. Between the crevasse of two buildings, deep down in the alleyway, Marcus could make out the sound he had heard. A woman lay on the ground, her face cut with a single streak of blood. Four large men stood over her, laughing and cackling maniacally, something Marcus could hear as clear from fifty feet above as if he was directly next to them. He slowly descended out of the air, coming to a gentle landing as his feet connected softly with the pavement. Come on, guys! Marcus stood slowly, taking the men by surprise. Aren't you getting tired of doing this? I mean, I recognize you from last week. He struck out a finger to point at one of the men. Truthfully, it was hard to distinguish between them, but he recognized the one. Crap! It's Helios! The man he pointed at screamed. The others started their eyes, worry and concern washing them all over. All right, all right. No need to start a fan club, Marcus japed. We gotta get out of here. He's the strongest man in the city, one of the other men shouted. Oh, stop it. Marcus waved a dismissive hand through the air. You're gonna make me blush. They all took to their heels in an instant and bolted down the alleyway. He slowly made his way over to the woman, helping her to her feet and ensuring she was okay before heading out of the alley. He looked in both directions and saw the men all getting into one car. Man, it's like they want to get caught. 
he thought to himself. He gently lifted himself into the air and took off down the street, beginning his pursuit. The car kicked up lingering newspapers and raggedy bags as it barreled down the street. Of course, Marcus was nearly right on top of them. The car bobbed and weaved in and out of traffic, extra careful to do so once it pulled onto a larger, busier street. At that moment, Marcus realized he needed to end it quickly before somebody got hurt. He hovered in just behind the car and grabbed its bumper, ripping it clean off as the car jutted and attempted to regain its control. It was easy for Marcus to forget his own strength. Instead, he soared up and over the car, planting himself firmly in front of it as it ran straight into him. Naturally, he brought it to a halt by slamming his hands on the hood of the car, tipping it forward and launching the back of it up into the air before it came crashing back down on the ground. Marcus saw the men fumbling around in the car, but not in a panic, out of confusion. The sound of sirens and cars screeching to a halt on the pavement filled Marcus's ears. He craned his neck back to see four police officers approaching, none of them in any particular hurry. They all waved to him as he waved back, stepping aside and allowing the officers to remove the men from the car. After yanking them from the car and pinning them against the ground, they cuffed all four of them. You did great, kid, the one familiar officer out of the four said to him. Somebody called in and said a woman was being mugged. It wouldn't happen to be by these four, would it? Your intuition serves you right, Officer Waters, sharing a smile with the man. How goes things today, Blaine? Well, other than these guys, Blaine grunted as he hoisted the man off the ground. Pretty quiet day. Couple break and enter, a few lifted cars, which we got back, of course. So, nothing out of the ordinary. Good to hear. Marcus walked alongside Blaine as they approached his cruiser. Really good to hear. If you're reaching for work, Blaine picked up on his eagerness as he ducked the head of the man he held, shoving him into the back of his car. Just fly around a bit. There's no shortage of crime in this city. I know. Finding them is always the hard part, though. Yeah, well, Blaine closed the door to his cruiser. If they didn't make us have to find them, our crime rate would be a lot lower. Marcus chuckled along with him. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other around. All units. All units. The voice came through the radio, catching both Marcus and Blaine's attention. The Coast Guard has issued a plea for assistance, as a call just came in that a tanker is sinking just off the coast. Marcus didn't need to hear any more. I'm on it. Marcus spoke affirmatively and shot into the air, knocking Blaine back only slightly. Marcus flew high enough in the air to be able to see the ocean, darting towards it quickly so that he could get a better view. As he approached, the wind whipped through his hair. He could faintly see it in the distance. Smoke billowed out at sea. Even from where Marcus flew, he could tell it wasn't from a stack or anything. It was coming from inside the ship. He zipped through the air, the rain tickling his cheeks as he crossed out over the ocean, bringing himself to a hovering halt above the sinking ship. It was a large tanker, nearly entirely engulfed in flames. It was halfway in the water, and Marcus could see people scampering and running on the deck, attempting to reach the bow to avoid the water for as long as possible. He didn't see any of the contents of the ship leaking into the water, sending a sense of relief to him. Regardless, he needed to save all the people, something he quickly jumped into action to do. He dove down to the surface of the ship, catching the attention of nearly everyone that stood on the deck. Hey! He heard a gruff but joyful voice shout, It's Helios! Don't worry, guys, Marcus assured them. I'm gonna get you all out of here. He instructed them on what to do, and although they seemed hesitant at first, they all realized that he was their best chance at survival. One by one, they all grabbed hold of each other, as many as he thought would be safe for a trip. He knew he couldn't take them all at once, and with the ship sinking rather slowly, so he knew he could afford to do a couple of trips. Once the first group all huddled together, their arms clasped tight around one another, the men in the center raised their hands to the sky for Marcus to grab hold of, 
lifting them all into the air. They wriggled and wavered at first, but adjusted to the strange feel. As quickly as he could manage, he carried the group of men across the ocean, putting them down softly on the rocky shore. He checked to ensure they were safe before heading back to the ship. The men on the shore yipped and hollered at him as he made his way back, doing the same thing again and again, bringing more and more men back to the shore. He had just set a group down, readying himself to return to grab the last group, when he heard an explosion. He turned just in time to see the flames rise high into the sky, rocking the ship back and forth from the explosion. He put himself on double time. He raced out over the ship, hovering above the last small group of men, grabbing them all tightly before the ship rocked in another explosion. It caused him to sway, forcing screams and shouts from the dangling men. He regained his composure quickly, clearing away from the ship as fast as he was able to. Just then, he saw all the boats barreling toward the ship, a combination of the Coast Guard and the police, all ready to douse the flames and bring the situation under control. He set the last group down. The sound of cheering and hollering was all he could hear as they clapped furiously, shouting their praises for him. He waved and thanked them, double-checking to ensure they were all okay. We are! Thanks to you, Helios! Someone shouted. Yeah, you're a real hero, man! Came another. He thanked them again for being so cooperative, jolting himself back into reality when he realized what time it was. Quickly, very quickly, he said his goodbyes and took off, up and into the air. He waved at all the men, his eyes catching the sight of Blaine, providing him with a courteous thumbs up, to which Marcus returned the courtesy. If I'm late, they'll kill me.